In the last video, we looked at configuring the page layout of our thesis using the geometry and fancy HDR packages. In this video, we're going to look at using images and tables. If you've never added images or tables into a LaTeX document, I recommend you first watch the relevant videos in our beginners tutorial series. Let's start with images. For this project, every image we use, we will store in the images folder to keep everything tidy. In the first video, we prepared the document for images by loading up the graphics package and by informing LaTeX where the images are stored using the graphics path command. Whenever we add an image into our thesis, we will use the figure environment. Here's an example. Notice that I've halved the size of the image and used the position specifier H to put it in the document where the code is in the text. It's really important to add captions to figures when writing a thesis. Notice that LaTeX has automatically numbered it according to what chapter it's part of. It is also really important to label each figure so you can accurately refer back to it in the text like this. When writing a thesis, you may want to include some slightly more complicated figures with multiple images. You can do this using subfigure environments inside a figure environment. Before we can do this though, we need to load up the caption and subcaption packages. We'll do an example with three images alongside each other with separate captions and labels. To start with, we create a new figure. center it, and then create a new subfigure. In the subfigure commands, we need to add a placement specifier and then give it a width. As we want three images next to each other, we set a width of 0.3 times the text width. You need to make sure that the sum of the widths you specify for the subfigures is less than the text width if you want them all on the same line. When we add the images in, we need to specify the width using width equals, followed by the text width command. The reason this works is because the text width within the subfigure is the width we specified in the begin subfigure command, i.e. 0.3 times the normal text width. Next we give the subfigure a separate caption and label. We can then end the subfigure and add the next two in. To add some spacing between the figures, we'll use the hfill command. If you don't want them all on the same line, you could just leave blank lines instead of the hfill commands. Please note that the indents I have used do not affect how the code is processed, they just make it more readable. The beauty of these subfigures is that we can refer to each of them individually in the text due to their individual labels, just like this. But we can also give the whole figure a caption and label. Now if we add a list of figures commands just after the table of contents, LaTeX will generate a list of all the figures used in the thesis and inform us where each can be found. Now let's talk about tables. When writing a thesis, you should enclose all your tables in the table environment. Here's a basic example.
Again, make sure you add both a caption and a label. Just like with images, you may want to group the tables together into a single table environment. This can be done using subtable environments inside a table environment. Here's an example. Notice that in each begin subtable command, we've included a position specifier and a width. Again, we can give each subtable a label and caption, as well as giving the whole table figure a label and caption. Now, in the same way we added a list of figures after the table of contents, we can add a list of tables using the list of tables command. This concludes our discussion on images and tables. In the next video, we'll look at adding a bibliography to our thesis. Please do subscribe to our channel to keep up to date.